my wonderful audience. Um, this is a workshop, but it's not a lecture. Therefore, I need your feedback on what would you see and what I will be throwing to you to throw back to me. I'm starting with this statement. Building capacity is building the human side of your capital. You know who said that? Or actually, it's me. <laughs> I believe in building the capacity of uh, the business owner himself. It's like, are, are you familiar with Formula One Re car racing? When you make a bet, w what do you really bet on? What do you put money for? The driver. Even if it was, for, it was a McLaren or a Ferrari or whatever, your bet is on the driver. The car itself will not do you any good. And the bad driver will not get you anywhere. You will lose. So this is what I'm, where I'm coming from. Excuse me? This is not working. Yeah, we're good now. Thank you. So our workshop has two parts today. The first one is increasing startup success through innovation capacity building techniques. And the second part is about is investing in startup capacity building financially rewarding. We're going to see that together. We're going to discuss this together and we'll come out with some conclusions. Unfortunately, we only have 45 minutes. And I'm not so happy about that, but what can I do? Babers want that. What do you think of this chart? This is the success rate of startups. In some countries, it's much better. It, it's much, uh, it's, it's much wider, but globally, this is the success rate of startups, and this is the failure rate. This is something between plus minus 20% and in, in average. And I, don't really, I didn't really find the right statistics, but this is something around it. Which means that 70 or 80% of the startups people invest in are failure cases. And this is sad. What can we do about it? One question I was asking people, shall we increase the success rate or decrease the failure rate? What do you think? Shall we, shall we focus on increasing the success rate or shall we focus on decreasing the failure rate? These are two different things. So what do you think, beautiful audience? Let's start from you. Failure. Decreasing. The this kind of person who likes to focus on the positive, but in this case, I think that increasing the failure. Excellent. Who else has it? Increasing success or failure. Mm -hmm. So we have two opinions here. Who's, sir? What do you think? I think it depends on uh, what is the, the goal of the entrepreneur. If the entrepreneur wants to, to just have um, a business to, to live from, um, then the failure is the most important thing. Mm -hmm. if, um, if it's uh, on, a, on a perspective of an investor that um, wants to, to have a huge success from that, uh, from that startup, 
the first thing is not to fail mm -hmm. um, because then it will recover the money and uh, but of course he wants to to have um, uh, to have a huge success so he'll try to to focus on success in europe probably people will will focus on failure mm -hmm. and in us people will focus on success i think it's thank two you. different perspectives very insightful thank you um, i have enrico then the gentleman here So uh, I think that uh, most of uh, companies that fail or new adventures that fail, they have a cycle like uh, act, fail, act, fail, act, fail, mm -hmm. and later they quit. Mm -hmm. They quit because they get tired or they don't they have don't, enough They money. don't have enough patience. Yes, yeah, exactly. Yep, I agree. And very few, or let's say the, the minority that succeed, they have another cycle. They act, they fail, after that they analyze, and after that they correct things. All right. So, so it's a learning cycle. That's, that's the, yeah. yeah. Or let, let's Thank say you. the original uh, Edward de Ming cycle, plan, do, check, act. Thank you, Enrico. Will you Welcome. please pass the mic for our friend here? <coughs> yes, just a question. When you say success, you mean uh, good exit, or because uh, you, could have, you could have a startup uh, Leaving, I mean, not not, not a success, but not failing. So, mm -hmm. what, what, no, I, what I mean is total success and total failure. Okay. There's nothing in between. I'm not addressing the things in between. Um, you have a point. That will be the last point because we sure. My that. point is, you know, it's not mine to determine. You know, when people have invested their time and talent and money, you know, in trying to create a business, it's not mine to determine whether they should. It's it's a, it's a bad thing to you know support them to succeed. So I would say you know invest to reduce failure because for the fact that the people have taken the initiative and invested all these things that I've mentioned, mm -hmm. you know they need support to be able to succeed because yeah. sometimes they fail not because you know of uh, it could be for lack of capacity but for other reasons as well. So if we actually help them to succeed, I mean to reduce failure you know, we, we're validating that the investment that they've made. So it's not mine to say it's wrong to help them not fail. Yeah. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, you have a point? Let that be the last point then. I think increasing success, it mm -hmm. provides more trust when there's more success than failure. Mm -hmm. And if we speak in terms of from the investor side, the investor will prefer the success more than the failure. Mm -hmm. And if we speak over towards the people itself, people are gathered towards success than failure. Mm -hmm. So more startups will be able to follow a path if there's more success mm -hmm. than failure. Thank you so much. Uh, I'm very convinced of what you're saying, and uh, I think the both points of view are totally right. And I'm proposing something here for you to give me feedback on. Now what's happening is this. The investor make an assessment for the team, the business model, the legal framework, etc. Then makes a decision investing in this business. And this is given us 20% success rate. What I'm going to propose is adding one more thing to this formula, which is this one. What about if the investor did the assessment and also invested in the business and all of over and above, he invested in building the capacity. What will happen here? Frankly, I don't have an answer. This is what we are going to come out together with. Maybe yes, maybe not. I just have some thoughts. In fact, I did some research in preparation to this workshop and I came out with uh, the failure, the, the failure reasons, the common failure reasons from different parts of the world. They were eight. All of them shared these eight. Of course, there are thousands, maybe. But what I found is these. I had pricing issues. This is one common. Another thing, I copied the other and it didn't work. There were no market need. I had the illusion of control over events. 
I ran out of cash. I took biased decisions. I was overconfident. Got outcompeted because of competition. There were technologies I didn't know about. There were new markets I didn't know about. There were new regulations I didn't know about. I think I'm losing audio here, sir. Yeah, please adjust, because I, I don't have a strong voice. This is why I failed in the singing. Uh, so. Here we go. It's still not, is it? Do you hear me? Oh, this is what I mean. So these were, according to my research, my humble research, these were the eight reasons for failure, for startup failure. Mm -hmm. I heard someone saying something. Ah, oh, they are not eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Why eight? Why did I say eight? There we must something is sticking. Okay, they were eleven. I thought of these eight. Are they eight? <laughs> I thought of these reasons. And I found that it's either one of three things. Either it is a lack of knowledge somewhere, a lack of skill somewhere, or lacks of abilities. Can you add something that I can benefit from? For me, I couldn't find more than these three things to link to those common fa failures. Well, uh, lack of money might be lack of knowledge. One, one reason. So personally, I only could link them to three things within the eco ecosystem. And that means If I want to invest, what I will be investing in, talking about capacity building, I have to invest either in knowledge enhancement or skill development or ability improvement. If you have a fourth component here, please let me know. I will add it, but to me, these are the three things I found. Even through the workshop now, if you have something, you thought of something, th something came up to your mind, just let me know. I'm still building this and I need your brains with me. There are five strategic questions for the investor to start. This is my proposition. Who is my target startup? Which target? Uh, which sector, uh, which industry, what is he doing, maybe which gender, who is he or she, what is the proficiency level do I need to build this, ca to build capacity, do I need to build capacity or not. Sometimes like uh, Mr. Paolo Andres said, so, peop so many people come to him asking him to invest in their, uh, so there's a question maybe you ask yourself. Maybe you take the decision that no, I don't want to invest. But when you want to invest, I think that this question is very important. Is he capable, does he have or she has the proficiency to run this business and make profits and make my investment a good investment or not? This is a question. What is the level of communication I need? Now, it is a problem, and I don't know if you shared that with me, that communication between the investor and the startups is almost zero. Do you agree? Do you agree with me? Do, do you see that this is something healthy or we can't work on it? Uh, I think uh, many entrepreneurs communicate a lot with the investor until the investor writes the check. 
So, so there is a kind of communication, but it's the not it's the linked. right. It's not the right communication. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Who should I deliver the capacity building to? Who should do the capacity building? Now there are so many forms of capacity building, and unfortunately, in my humble opinion, that they are in the form of lectures, training something from the on the shelf, you just throw it, and here we go, two, three hours, maybe three days, then he goes, okay, he's trained now. In my opinion, this is not right. And I will tell you later throughout our discussion why. The last question is, how will I know that I have succeeded as an investor? How will you know that? if you put money in capacity building that you have succeeded or not? That is another question that we will be answering throughout the 20 minutes left. <laughs> so, if you want to invest in building the capacity, what is the recommended capacity building techniques? This is something that I really wish to discuss with you because this is my baby. This is something I have uh, done myself, I have applied myself, but also I need your feedback on it to make it better maybe, or maybe throw it, I don't know, do you tell me? In my opinion, that the thing starts in the proficiency level desired. I need to know what proficiencies <coughs> are needed for this startup to succeed. What is the proficiency level? Meaning that if I have the proficiency level here, then this startup logically will work. And we have agreed, or maybe you can add on it, that I have to work on knowledge, skills, and abilities. So what should I do after identifying the proficiency, the desired proficiency level? What I do usually is to see what proficiencies they have now. In terms of what level of knowledge do they have now? What level of skills do they have now? What level of abilities they have now? And this is done through direct testing. I bring them, make a test, uh, a specialized test course it's not it's not just uh, a questionnaire that they answer and throw no it's something specialized that we do it correctly so we can come up with where they are now the second step after that is what is missing there's a gap between the proficiency level desired and the level of the level we have go ahead please I'm trying to understand the clear difference between skills the skills and, and abilities. abilities. Yes. <laughs> I know, yes. Okay. okay. Uh, I was coming to that, but since you've asked, now, if I explain to you what abilities mean, you will understand what's the difference immediately. Ah, oh, sorry. Is, is this assuming that we are investing only in the founder or the team and not the product? Both. Or both the project and and the, the product what i was proposing is that we are as investors investing in the project what if we invest in the project and in the capacity building we pay money here we pay money there what will happen are we losing or are we getting more money what will happen so we are in both ways but my focus is in the capacity building side Okay, and the second question I have is, how do you determine the proficiency level desired of each individual or each, each, each um, company? Yeah, now the proficiency level is something that you, usually it, it's a big issue, it has five levels. So if you are in the beginning, you need to know a few things. And it, it is related to what type of business you are running or you want to start. Now, if you're talking about 
something that w w has to do with fintechs or technology, then the proficiencies are different from someone who is starting uh, a manufacturing business. There is an international practice for this, actually. This is not something I'm coming with. It is an international practice, and we apply what is internationally has been applied. And as I told you, it has five levels, and we can just look at them, uh, analyze them, and see what proficiency level for each startup business we are addressing. So the second step is about defining the gap in between what the startup business owner already have and where shall we, what shall we do? Where is the gap to make him reach the proficiency level? Now back to your question about the difference between skills and abilities. Give me one skill. What is a skill? Give me one. Hmm? Web designing, designing skill, all right. Someone who can design is skilled in designing. But does he have the patience to continue time after time? Patience is an ability. Being flexible is an ability. Taking decisions is an ability. Please. Such kind of abilities that the startup should have. Determination is important. Persistent also. Mm -hmm. These are kind of values, I would say. These value. Without it, only with the skills would be not exactly. reach the, the yes. success. And yeah. sometimes yeah. Uh, they replace abilities with values. The KSAs. Sometimes it's knowledge, skills, abilities, or knowledge, skills, <laughs> values, or knowledge, skills. Um, attitudes also. I hope I clarified my point to you. Now you know what is the difference. Sure. Thank you. Next step is what I'm going to do. We were talking about missing skills, missing knowledge, missing abilities. What does that mean? If there is missing knowledge, what do I have to do? Now, today the world is changing rapidly. Technology is making everything changing in a fast way. Some things were old, they cannot, we cannot use them, even pieces of knowledge. So we don't only need to learn, we need to unlearn and we need to relearn because things are changing now. There are so many parts of so many knowledge that is not doing us any good now. These things, we need to unlearn them. Unlearning is forgetting what you have learned because there are new things now. And who is going to succeed these days is the person who is able to unlearn and relearn. This is very important. New things are there. Things are changing very rapidly. For the skills, as I need to upskill, I need to reskill for the same reason. And it's the same story with abilities. I need to enable from doing something and re-able from doing something. It is not the same anymore. Lots of things are changing. We need to cope with this. So to bridge the gap, this is what I propose we need to be doing to bring this level up to that level. If we do this correctly, then this will go there, meaning that the startup business owner now has the, the proficiency level. They reach the proficiency level. Now for you as an investor, logically, do you think that following these steps would increase the return on your investment or not? 
logically. What do you think? I'm talking logic here. Any opinions? Yes. Who says yes? Who says no? Why? Because you have, you must take account the competition as well. Mm -hmm. You must take account the market, the global market that your startup, your, the, 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 the whole process is referred to, the product, the service, which has nothing to do with the competition and the market with uh, the, f the fact that your founder, the team, has knowledge, has skills, has abilities. Yeah, I agree. I fully agree. This is he may be market the conditions. One. Market yeah. conditions can change out of the blue. You don't know what's, what's going on. Not to mention the economy, not to mention yeah. unprecedented. Any other opinion, person? please? If to do that, mm -hmm. if the founder will spend all the time he has to do this, he will not focus on validating the, the business. Why not? If he spends all the time he has, the investor? is limited. No, the founder. If the founder spends all the time focusing on him mm -hmm. instead of building the business, mm -hmm. it will not work. I'm not saying you need 100% of the time doing this to, to achieve it. But that's a risk, focusing, putting the founder, focusing on himself instead of in the business. Or mm -hmm. you take more time to reach the same Valid place. point. So there has to be some time management with this to solve it, to make it uh, happen the right way. That's excellent. Thank you for this. I will take that into my consideration, please. But I think the way you conceptualized it at the beginning, you weren't saying it's going to be an either or, and you weren't saying that everything else would be ignored. So to your point, I think the formula at the beginning that you showed was that you need to do everything else you would do when you want to invest in, in a business, plus what you're describing now. So you're not telling anybody that they wouldn't consider competition and market analysis, mm -hmm. everything we always do. I think what you're trying to show is that this has to be an additional layer mm -hmm. of complexity, right? That's true. That's true, but it is also a valid point that I will take my co to my consideration and I will really develop this thing according to wha what feedback I'm getting from you, yeah. Enrico. Uh, according to what we are discussing now, I think that there are three kinds of people. First, there are people that invest in business. There are people that invest at himself to learn and mostly they become academics. And there is uh, very few people that invest in business and they invest in himself too. And these are the most successful people. Mm -hmm. So th do you think that investment, investing, putting money and building the capacity will end up with more return on the investment? So you're giving an answer which, uh, which is uh, something uh, I really love to hear and I really love to hear the other side of it. Please, Malak. Yes, what I would like to say concerning this uh, this model, if we can say it like this, is that it gives us uh, an idea about what, uh, in, mm, as, as an investor, at the time of uh, willing to invest, maybe I will take into consideration in my criteria, in my decision making about if I invest yes or not, on this uh, on criteria based on knowledge, skills, and abilities of the team, maybe on the CEO, maybe on the CTO, on on the team that is of the startup, and it, I think it can be insightful to to include these criteria from now on uh, at the time of decision making. If you're convinced, well, I'll be glad to help. Also, I'm just trying to find my way in this, and with your help. Um, all right, uh, we'll go back to you. Okay, so I think investing in 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 the skills, uh, capacity building, will, uh, should I say indirectly, increase the ROI. Why? Because it will reduce the chances of failure. Talking about m market competition and changes and market volatility and all of that, if the team is knowledgeable. I want to believe that this knowledge is now all about them understanding their market, understanding the environment, knowing how to even follow predictions and all of that. So if they if they are knowledgeable enough, I mean, like if we if we increase their 
build their capacity to, I mean, to have this knowledge, to close this, the knowledge gap. I should think that will make them understand their markets better and so know how to follow competition, but even know who their competitors are and all of that, that's, that should be part of the knowledge. So, so I think that will just uh, overall increase their, their chances of survival and then your chance of a um, better ROI. Building the, building the knowledge is not only building a technical knowledge. You need to know your competitors. Exactly. The regulatory framework, what technologies mm -hmm. are there, everything mm -hmm. that is around you that you don't know you need to know about. This is what about uh, this is what I was talking about learning and e -lear and unlearning and okay. relearning. What's going on? What's new? What do I have to forget? What do I have to apply? Thank you for your point. Yeah. Miss Nigeria. <laughs> Good afternoon. Um, what I'm taking from this at least the number of slides you've gone through so far is that when investors want to invest, they don't they shouldn't just look at the product. They should think about investing their time in mentoring the P, the team that they're going to invest in. Mm -hmm. And I'm not quite sure knowledge, skills and abilities cover all the aspects that you might find a gap in with that team. And you need to be looking at that team and thinking, if they don't have teachable, submissible um, spirits for you to imbibe your experience, your network, and generally mentor them through that time, after all, your money is involved. You know, you have to start thinking when you want to drop your money as an investor, think, my money is going in here. I need to take these people as a team and groom them. I, that's what I'm getting from all of this. Do you agree on it? Do I agree? I agree completely. Yes. Thank so you. So you deserve a bonbon. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. All right. Uh, so after we reach the proficiency level, this is not enough. Uh, ah, sorry, sorry, just sorry, please, once, because on. I have to go. Please, I'm uh, sorry, unfortunately, I, I couldn't, I couldn't see the whole the presentation, but I've been fortunate yeah, enough to me, discuss with you before. Yeah, um, I just have a question: um, How much of your gut feeling you use when you choose teams? Again, I didn't uh, get your question. So, yes. how much of your gut feeling instinct? Gut feeling. Yes. Do you think in your by your experience? Because mm. here we are talking values. We are talking all the things that are subjective and difficult to yeah. qualify. Yeah. Now in your experience, how much gut feeling do you usually use yeah. to take well, that decision when choosing teams? Excellent question. I will answer it from my background. My background is credit, and I always followed my feeling when I evaluate the character of that person. It happened so many times in my career life that I met people who have, who has everything all right, all the numbers are okay, but I didn't feel good, and it was turned up. This is very important. Now, when someone asks you to invest in him or in his business, and you feel like he's a hizzy wizzy guy, from my background, I will drop it. I will not take the chance. I hope that answers your questions. It's very important, it's a deal breaker, at least from my point of view. If someone else has a point of view, it's very much respected, unless you all agree on that. Malek. is that uh, with this flair and with this heartfelt that you're talking about, the modelization of these kind of things can help investors systematize these kind of processes. Yeah. You know, th this, this doesn't have an equation. For y y people have different cultures, different backgrounds. Yeah. When I deal with my people, I know who's hizzy wizzy but maybe if I deal for, f with someone from another nation or from another culture, I will be tricked. I don't know. So this is for you to judge on. And this is your own way of judging on people's character. So it is something that I really believe on, but it's an individual thing at the end of the day. There's no science that can 
as far as I know. But you can say one plus one equals two, and this is yes, this is no. This is a gut feeling, yes. Uh, he said, please. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, what I would like to add, you know, we have been working with many startups at Hypnos, and really we found that the lack of knowledge, experience, and the skills, abilities, all that are bringing the high rate of failure between the entrepreneurs. Mm -hmm. So what happened now? The same that we, like a big corporate, they do like coaching and all the business advisor and so we have in the startup entrepreneurship program we have called mentoring, mentoring yeah, program. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And this with mentoring, uh, usually it, it will take one year or more or less. The mentor play a role in actually bring his personal experience and he will be like experienced, bring his knowledge and develop the skills of the entrepreneurs. Well, thank you for bringing this. Uh, yes, we are coming to it actually. Absolutely, and with Thank that, increase the uh, exactly. Cross this the is what, rate. yeah. <coughs> uh, I'm 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 completely with you that so we as investors we we sh we you, should. You with me? You take a bomb. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Thank you very Thank much. You. <laughs> no, but um, that we we must invest uh, on, on building uh, that capacity. But uh, I I I don't know if is with money or with time that's um, I think uh, I think I'm thinking about but in very very early, early stages um, you have too many things you you must do as a founder like being fast on learning mm -hmm. learning fast mm -hmm. and um, having a low burn rate so you have more time mm -hmm. uh, to learn and to find out the, the real way yeah. the good way to go um, if we, as soon as we put money in the company, the money starts to to go away, so to burn. So if you put money uh, in a very, very early stage and you still need to learn a lot, you will run out of money before um, uh, Learning, Good argument. and then you can you are not in the the situation of raising the, the next round, so you you miss the opportunity. Yeah. So uh, building, helping the founder to do that before raising money, yeah. and then putting money to validate the business model well, with a good founder founding team. Then we have the runway to achieve the next round, right? I fully agree with that. And I was about to ask just a question is when is the right timing for investing in capacity you building? But you you guys hmm? <laughs> you agree we can have a swim from here. Yeah, okay. Uh, you see how quickly they are connected? <laughs> <laughs> well thank you for raising this. This is very important about when to start this. And this is something that really needs to a big thought uh, in it. it we, we need to know when and how. If we are going to adopt this way of investing in capacity building, maybe we will come out with a, with, with a result that it's not the right way to invest. Maybe. Please. I don't have much time, I'm yeah. sorry. but <coughs> uh, About skill and uh, competence, com skill and uh, knowledge, I mean, it can be done uh, uh, because it's possible to learn. Abilities is, is more difficult because we are talking about soft skill and the person is not doing a course that can learn how to, to be patient or be persistent. So these kind of things can take longer, for sure, for yeah. abilities, when, when it's possible, because sometimes it's not possible. It's, it's impossible to turn a banana in, in a yeah. watermelon. <laughs> One thing I will tell you about, we can, we can measure these things. I hope that we have enough time to show you how we can measure these, but, but unfortunately. But these things can be measured, really. Now, how to get there? There are also tools, methods, and techniques for doing this. But the problem is not, this is not a TOT program, and I cannot go into such details. I need three days. All, all what they're giving me is 45 minutes, and this is very short, I'm sorry, but if you need more, I will give you my 
phone number, and I do answer my WhatsApp messages. Ask me, I will answer. Thank you for raising this. So I will, I, will, I will give you two bonbons. <laughs> Here, <laughs> two. <laughs> Can you make them ten? <laughs> oh, <you have> ten. <laughs> we have ten minutes from Paolo. Thank you. <laughs> no comment. No, I think everyone, every everyone here is so nice. You are wonderful, actually. Uh, I'm very grateful that you are sharing with me and give me the benefit. Um, so we, we come up with the next step. It is the follow-up plans. It is not enough to reach the proficiency level and start. So the follow-up plans is mentoring. This is one thing. Coaching is another thing. And evaluation. We need to plan this in order to see are we really getting results of this investment in capacity building that we are making or not. So it's not only man uh, mentoring. Mentoring is a very good thing, but we can add to it coaching. What is coaching? What is the difference? Who can tell me the difference between coaching and mentoring? And I will give him a bonbon. <laughs> yeah, who's... Yeah, all right. Mentoring Paula. is more long term and uh, coaching is more short term. Short term. Thank you. Anyone would like to add something here? Yeah. Enrico, please. Okay. Okay. We'll get back to you, Enrico. Uh, mentoring is actually also that you uh, bring the uh, advice and advise the, the mentorship and your knowledge, experience in an unstructured form. Mm -hmm. That could be not like the coaching, coach is more uh, form structured, structured, more structured, and also uh, there will be like performance driven. Actually, it's that more than yeah, that makes shows, it more yeah. clear. Thank you, Enrico. Uh, please, uh, I think that uh, coaching and mentoring uh, have some differences, which are which are important. Coaching spend more time in a daily basis. Mm -hmm. While mentoring, don't spend time in time in daily, ba uh, you know, in daily mm -hmm. basis. Uh, on the other hand, uh, coach give the answer, while mentor don't give the answer. Just mentor gives the options. The options. That's yeah. that makes it even more clear. Thank you, mm -hmm. Enrico. That's very insightful. So, these were the stages. I will go through them very fast for you to. Actually, I'm I'm not much into the. Beamer. I prefer writing and putting on the wall, but we have to do this for, for this. Uh, so we were talking about the reasons of failure, which I thought they were eight, and now I know they are 11. And uh, said, talked about the investment the knowledge uh, in knowledge and skill and ability. The five questions that uh, the investor needs to ask, you can think of them or add on them. What is the commended capacity building technique? Said that we determine the proficiency level, determine the current level of knowledge, skills, and abilities, define the gap, which, which uh, missing, which knowledge, which skill, which ability is missing. Then we do learning, unlearning, upskilling, reskilling, re enable to bridge the gaps, and we build the proficiency level and follow up with the follow up plans where we can make sure that we are on the right track. So, the big question now, will this come out with higher success rates? Will it come out with financial returns on the investment? For me, logically, it, it makes total sense. Yes, it will. A better, a better driver drives better. Uh, yeah. the best drivers or to transform an uh, awful driver into a good one? Of course, you don't need awful drivers. <laughs> well, some drivers will never learn, <laughs> of course. So I, I don't think I completely agree with your statement over there. Well, give me my bonbon then. Oh, well, you can <laughs> 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 it. Okay, the, the reason I'll, I'll say that is this, and, and I think I'm beginning to hear what the lady over there was saying. Yeah. Um, 
when when you have uh, a team that is not all together there and you spend time in investing in them yes you get to the level that they should have gotten to if they had invested in themselves initially however eventually if you're investing in a product and you expect a return um, let's fi let's focus on the product now yeah and you expect a return however you, you now find out that you have to take a few steps back to invest in your team, mm -hmm. would you really get more than that particular value? The answer is potentially no, because you have already, that's where you were going anyway. However, if you had better drivers initially, mm -hmm. and you did a projection, and then you enhanced their um, competencies, then you get perhaps, perhaps, probably, more return than you initially were supposed to have. So what you're, my, just my argument. What you're telling me, that there are <coughs> acceptable limits and unacceptable limits to these, right? So the, if you the, profession, the proficiency level desired is an acceptable level. What, what yeah. is it, again? Your proficiency level desired, right up there, is an acceptable limit. That, that, that This one is a good driver already. He's winning prizes. Absolutely. But so. I'm, I'm talking about a driver who knows how to drive. He made some success. But in order for you to win your money back, you want to make him a better driver. So what you're saying, in my understanding, is that if the current level is somewhere here, just drop it. Don't bother about it. No. If it is somewhere here or there, go That's ahead. not what I'm saying. What no. I'm saying is that when you get to this in, uh, the team and you want to invest, you do this analysis, you realize this is where you are. You do the analysis of the product and you realize this is my return on investment, right? And mm -hmm. you decide that this is how long it's going to take me to get my money back. Mm -hmm. At that point, you know what when, right? And you decide, okay, let me take a few steps back and invest in these people. Mm -hmm. At the end of the day, your question there was, do you get your return on investment? Mm -hmm. Yeah, but then do you really get it? Because you have added more in terms of investment in these people than, I don't know. If I, I'm I will ask sense. you the, the same question in a different way. Do you think that in raising the capacity, and building the capacity. We will be having in a less failure. No, th so this is my point. Um, yeah. at initially, you did your ROI based on product. On product. On product, yeah. right? And then you decide, oh, there's a, then, then you're saying we should also add. Um, if needed. If needed. Yeah. Add this. If needed, add this. Would you get more than that ROI at that point in time? This is what I'm trying to discuss with you and right, to come okay. out with it. With an, with a, and this is the second part I will be okay. addressing now okay. show, to show you my proposal and then tell me what you think. Okay. Because quantifying this is not there yet. There's no quantifying for or, or a way to calculate the return on investment out of capacity okay. building. This is not in the, in the world yet. This is um, what I'm trying to, with you, find a way to quantify it. So I will, after your permission, continue. All right. To startups, they have learned, unlearned, and relearned. They have been upskilled and reskilled, enabled and reabled, and logically, there will be a higher proper probability of success in addition to there will be more value of the management team. There will be more value. Someone will be coming to assess them again. The second, after the exit, after the investor makes his exit, there will be another investor coming to assess this team. And so this team will be having more value, logically. So more investors, logically, will be coming and investing again. And the cycle will be completed for the investor if you look if you invest in the or, or you build the capacity you are not only looking at the business you are also looking at the 
business owner. Therefore, you will be having extra funded decisions. Your decisions will be based on two things instead, instead of only the business. There's only also the team and the team capacity. You will be having sensible selections for your investment, where to, where to invest, what to invest in. And you will be having an enhanced vision, especially when you are uh, assessing the risk and the strategic decision making in building your portfolio. This is from my point of view. So, if we want to find out what will come here, what we need to do is to find the right matrix to quantify this. And this is a really big challenge. I didn't know if anyone knows a way of quantifying this. Let me know. I don't know yet. I'm just proposing things here and seeing what you think, please. In, uh, we can quantify capacity building in the coaching domain. I come from the coaching domain and uh, we have developed many ways to measure the capacity building mm -hmm. because uh, uh, the coaching domain has been challenged by many corporations saying, uh, how can you calculate the return on investment of coaching? Mm -hmm. So <laughs> they have uplifted this, this challenge and they have succeeded in finding some metrics. So this could well, be helpful. I wish we have the complete. time that you, c where you can explain this to us, but I'm sure it's going to take No, we just, uh, it was just a hint in order to well, complete thank the you. question. It means that you deserve a bonbon. <laughs> Here you go. They are supporting, supporting this. My proposal is that we need first to build a database. Now, I have been looking especially at the, uh, the, uh, uh, B, uh, the business angel development uh, forum, looking for a database. How many success cases do we have? How many failure, fa the, Bases do we have? How many success sta uh, stories do we have that received capacity building and succeeded? How many of them did not receive and succeed? How many of them received and failed? We don't have this information. So what I'm calling for is something that has to be done on the global level, and I would strongly uh, uh, recommend that uh, WBF do it because it's, a, it's an international body and they are the one who should be taking this initiative. So building the database is something that will show us a lot of information about who received capacity building and succeeded, who did not receive and failed, who received and failed, who did not receive and success. Then we can, after that, set some data test points. Once we have these analyzed, categorized, we can go to some test points. What do you suggest for a data test point here? Profitability is one thing. You can test it. So if you have capacity building investment programs, you start watching what was happening with profitability. What else do you suggest? Satisfaction. Satisfaction. Customer satisfaction or self-satisfaction? No, 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 no. uh, investor satisfaction and founder satisfaction. Investor and founder. Founder satisfaction. Excellent. This is this That's is a one complex one, but it's a mix of things. But uh, I think it satisfaction. works. Uh, I, I would ag fully agree with you. But when I say test data points, is something that you can measure. Yeah. I mean, wha the reason I give profitability is that you can give a number. Well, we would be happy to cooperate with that. Maybe efficiency. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. These data points, everyone can think of what data points he can test. When you have a capacity building program and you start over time watching what's going on, you see that profitability for those who received capacity building investment program are going up. Or the efficiency is getting better, the numbers. Or, what? 
Who can suggest something else? Failure rate? In the, in the business itself or the whole? Uh, the whole, that's the trend. Yeah, please. almost nothing because you need to compare it with expectations for that's what I'm coming from that, that's what I'm coming for okay just let me <laughs> there. this this guy this guy is always what what I would <laughs> like to see as well is the topic how is it related to the general economy because that also has an impact yeah and if you're in a growth economy then that will have a different impact than you're in a declining that can be a data test point also Productivity can be a test point also. So many test points we can uh, measure or see how are, we, how are they going because we have applied capacity building investment programs. As you said, we can make predictions or set targets. If talking about profitability, I think that the profitability will come up by like 20% more if I have applied a capacity building investment program. You set these data test points, we make a kind of prediction, we set targets for them. My targets, of course they, has to be, they have to be logical targets so we can really measure. And sometimes it's wrong, sometimes it's right. All right, I'll finish. <laughs> come on. Not time for you. Will someone help me with this? <laughs> it's not. Can you push the button from there, please? My God, no, it's not time for it. No, uh, it needs to be reset there. It's on. All right. So it took them all in one shot. Can we go back with the with the button, please? Okay. We don't have much time. I'm sorry, Paolo. This is out of my hand. All right. This slide is okay. This slide. This is the last slide. Just please put the last slide. All right, I'll jump to the last slide. Now, after we set the target data point, uh, the targets, my proposal is to deploy these capacity building investment programs. They move to comparing the goals with the actual. This is my prediction and this is the actual, what happened. So, what I have predicted is what is the, uh, is the matrix that I will be using. The right prediction doesn't have, for all these percentages that we have set targets for, the result might be different, but what is closer to my prediction? That will be the matrix that I will can read the future through it. The, na the last step is about when we have these matrix, we go and track these matrix because you can improve what you can measure. This is in short, sorry the time is, was not helping us, but I hope that I have passed the idea to you and I hope that you can give me back your thoughts so we can make this better or maybe drop it, I don't know. So let me know. Thank you for your attendance. I'm very sorry for taking your time, Paolo. Would you accept another one as an apology? <laughs> Thank you, sir. Thank you, wonderful people. Appreciate that. Thank you. My my pleasure.